In this video, we're going to look at an integral which squeezes one more result out of a series of videos that we've been doing related to the integral of natural log of sine or cosine of x. So um, the integral that we want to look at in this case is the integral from 0 to infinity of the arctan squared of 1 over x. And just as a tool here, which we've proven in a previous video, we've got the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of natural log of sine of x is equal to negative pi over 2 times the natural log of 2. Okay, so let's get to it. So the first thing that we're going to do is a simple u substitution. So let's go ahead and let um, t equal 1 over x. And I said u substitution, but we're going to use the variable t. So notice that's going to uh, be the same thing as saying that x is equal to 1 over t. But now that's going to make dx equal negative 1 over t squared dt. And so that's important to know because we'll plug this value of dx into here. And notice uh, this value of x will be plugged into there. Now let's see what happens to the bounds of integration. So notice this is an improper integral on both sides, so we really need to be thinking about limits. So notice as x approaches 0 from above, so from the right, because notice our integral is from 0 to infinity, so it's not a two-sided limit that we care about, it is a one-sided limit from above, then that's going to make uh, t approach positive infinity. And that's important because if it was a two-sided limit, this limit would not exist. But then uh, when x approaches positive infinity, which is the upper bound here in terms of x, then t is going to approach zero, and I should say maybe from the right in this case. Okay, so let's look at all of this setup that we have here, which is important to transfer, transfer this from an x integral to a t integral. So this is going to give us the integral from um, positive infinity to zero, because notice the bounds kind of switch in this case, of um, the arctan of t, and now we have that's multiplied by negative one over t squared dt. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is let this minus sign here change the order of the bounds of integration. And I forgot my um, arctan squared. So that's going to give me the integral from zero to infinity of um, arctan squared t um, over t squared dt. So now from here we're going to do an integration by parts and we're going to look at uh, what portion of this integrand do we, do we know how to take the antiderivative of and what portion of it can we take the um, derivative of. And uh, it's kind of tricky in this case but what works is we will let u equal this arctan squared t. So notice by the chain rule that's going to make du equal 2 arctan t over t squared plus 1 dt. Okay, good. And then next, we'll let dv equal everything left over. So that's going to be 1 over t squared dt, but that's going to make, d, that's going to make v equal to minus 1 over t dt, again by taking the antiderivative of that. So now we're going to go ahead and use the integration by parts formula. So I'll just remind you of what that is. So here we have the integral u dv is uh, u times v minus the integral v du. Okay. So that is going to give us um, u times v. So that's going to be minus arctan squared of t over uh t, and I realized I have a dt here, but that doesn't make any sense. Now we need to evaluate that from 0 to infinity. Now that's actually going to involve taking a um, limit, and we'll do that in the next step, but we'll just leave it like this for now. And now we're going to have minus uh, the integral of v du, but notice v has a minus sign built in, so that's going to cancel. So here we're going to have plus the integral from 0 to infinity of v du. So in other words, that's 2 arctan of t over t times t squared plus 1 dt. 
So we've got this bit. So now for the rest of this board, I want to focus on this portion. And notice that this is going to be broken down into two pieces. This is going to be broken down into the limit as t goes to infinity of uh, minus arctan squared of t over t. And then plus the limit as t goes to zero of arctan squared of t over t. Okay, where uh, here we just plugged them in and subtracted, but this turned into a plus because we have this minus sign out here. Okay, good. So now let's look at this one first. So if we uh, let the numerator limit as the argument goes to infinity, then that limits to pi over two. So that's like kind of a well-known fact, so I won't worry about that too much. So this guy right here limits to pi over two, and that's because cosine of pi over two is zero, um, and sine of pi over two is one, and so tangent of pi over two is like infinity, which means the inverse tangent of pi over two is, uh, sorry, the inverse tangent of infinity is pi over two. So now that's a sketchy way to think about it, but that'll be okay in this case. So we have, here we have pi over two squared because we've arc tan squared squared, and then this denominator goes to infinity, which means this whole thing goes to zero, because we have just a number on the top and then infinity on the bottom. Now, this is an indeterminate form. The inverse tangent of zero is zero, and then obviously if you plug zero into the denominator, you get zero. So here we can use L'Hopital's rule for this second bit, and that's gonna give us the limit as t goes to zero of, so this is gonna give us two arctan t over t squared plus one. So notice, after doing that, we only really get the derivative of the numerator because the derivative of the denominator is one. Now if we plug t equals zero into this, this numerator is gonna go off to zero, and then uh, this denominator is gonna go off to one. And so that makes this entire limit that we, we need to calculate here zero. In other words, this portion of the integration by parts is zero. Okay, so now I'm going to erase the board and then I'm going to bring this integral up to the top because that's all that we lack in order to finish this off. Okay, so we left off at this point. Our goal integral is equal to twice the integral from zero to infinity of arctan of t over t uh, times t squared plus one. And now we wanna do uh, another substitution. So the substitution that we will do in this case is we'll let y equal arctan of t. And this is like um, an intuitive substitution because notice we have the inverse tangent of t is inside the integral and its derivative, which is dt over t squared plus one, is also inside the integral. So let's go ahead and notice that. Notice that uh, dy is equal to one over uh, t squared plus one dt. So we're good to go there. And then you might say, well, what about this t term? But we can just apply tangent to both sides, and we get t equals the tangent of y. So we're good to go there. But what about the bounds of integration? So notice that if uh, t equals 0, that means that uh, y equals um, arctan of 0, but the arctangent of 0 is 0. And then if t is approaching infinity, then that means that y equals the limit as t approaches infinity of arctan of t. But as we described previously, that's equal to pi over 2. So that takes care of the bounds of integration. So let's see what we can get when we plug all of this in. Notice we'll uh, let this dy term gobble up this dt over uh, t squared plus one. This uh, y term will take care of this tangent t. And then finally this t term will take care of that. Okay, great. So this is going to give us twice, and now we have the integral from zero to pi halves of, so we're going to have a y in the numerator and then a tangent y in the denominator. So we have y over tangent of y dy.
I'm going to rewrite this in a very, very slight way um, before we do our next integration by part. So this is going to be the same thing as 2 times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of y times cotangent of y dy. Okay. Now let's go ahead and do our integration by parts. And so uh, we'll choose our integration by parts so that the derivative of u becomes simpler. So that means a good choice for u will be y. So we'll take u to be y. Notice that means that du equals dy. And then that means we're going to take uh, dv to be equal to cotangent of y dy. But the antiderivative of cotangent is actually uh, kind of known, and it's going to be the natural log of sine. So now let's talk through that. Notice if we take the derivative of the natural log of sine, we get 1 over sine times the derivative of sine, which is cosine. So we get cosine over sine, which is cotangent. Now we can apply our integration by parts formula. So this is going to be twice times the quantity u times v. So that's going to be y times the natural log of sine of y um, minus uh, the antiderivative or the integral of v du, so that'll be 0 to pi over 2 v du, um, so that's actually just the natural log of sine of y. So look, our previous calculation just showed up in here, and I should say this part needs to be evaluated from 0 to pi over 2. So, uh, I'll clean up the board because there's actually something to do for this evaluation. There's a limit that we need to take, um, and I want to make sure to do that carefully. So, I'll clean up the board, bring that to the top, and then we'll finish it off. So, we've worked our goal integral down to this form. So, we have 2 times y times natural log of sine y evaluated from 0 to pi over 2. And I should put evaluated in quotes because, notice this is an indeterminate form at uh, 0 so we really need to take a limit here. And then um, this integral right here, which we've calculated before, and so we'll hold on to this for the very end. So notice, if we plug in pi over 2 into this, we're totally fine. We get the natural log of sine of pi over 2, but sine of pi over 2 is 1, so that's just going to give us 0. So this is going to be 0 from plugging pi over 2 in, and then minus the limit, as y approaches 0 from above of 2y natural log of sine of y. So that's how we take care of this kind of badness that's happening in this lower bound uh, related to our integration. And then notice we have minus 2 times this term right here. So that's going to give us a plus pi times natural log of 2, again, by previous work. So now let's go ahead and look at this limit. As y approaches 0 from above, this is going to give us 0, but the natural log will give us a negative infinity, so that's an indeterminate form. We can turn that into something that uh, we can use L'Hopital's rule uh, with the following. So this is minus 2, the limit as y goes to 0 from above of natural log of sine of y over... 1 over y. And now notice this is quote unquote type infinity over infinity. So we're good to use uh, L'Hopital's rule. So let's go ahead and do that. So that's going to give us minus 2, uh, the limit as y goes to 0 from above. And then the derivative of the natural log of sine of y is going to be uh, cosine of y over sine of y. And then we have this is all over negative 1 over y squared. Okay, good. So we've got that. And now let's just go ahead and focus on this bit so I don't need to bring this down. But notice this limit is going to be the same as the following. We can rearrange some things. Notice this minus sign is going to cancel with that minus sign. So I'll go ahead and let that happen. And now we have the limit as y approaches 0 from the right of, so we can flip this up and we'll get y over sine of y times uh, y times cosine of y, something like that.
Okay, so, but now these have well-known limits as y approaches zero. So notice this bit right here is y approaches zero is obviously zero. We get zero times one. But then what's left over is a common calculus one type integral. And when y approaches zero in this case, this bit goes to one, which means we have this whole limit right here is going to one times zero, which is zero, which makes this pi times the natural log of two, the final answer for our goal integral. Okay, good. That's a good place to stop this video.